compute the flux of the vector field defined by the components y negative x1 over the portion of the surface z is equal to x squared plus y squared below the plane z equals 4 oriented by the downward unit normal vector n. So here looking at our surface we see that it is explicitly defined and so we want to recall the vector surface integral for an explicitly defined surface. So we have the surface integral over S of the vector field dotted with the normal vector dS is equivalent to the double integral over the region R, the domain of S, defined by the dot product of the vector field with components F, G, H. And we're dotting this with the normal vector of the explicitly defined surface. So that's minus the partial derivative of Z with respect to X minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, 1 dA. So we have everything that we need to get started here with the exception of the bounds on r. The so we need to determine the domain of our surface. So let's start by sketching our surface in three dimensions. So looking at what we're given here, we know that we this surface is bounded by the paraboloid which is z is equal to x squared plus y squared. And it's bounded above by the plane z is equal to 4. So sketching this in space, we have our z axis and our x axis and the y axis. So we know then we have the paraboloid below, and then above this, or it's bounded above by the plane at z is equal to 4. So here's our, our little surface here. And so bounded above by z is equal to 4, bounded below by the paraboloid z is equal to x squared plus y squared. And so we want to determine the domain of our surface, right, the bounds on R. So we want to think about this surface's projection into the xy plane, or the shadow that it's casting into the xy plane. And just in looking at our three-dimensional region here, we can see that R and R2 is a full circle. We want to define the bounds on R. So here, because we have two different surfaces, we have the plane on the top, or bounding above, and the paraboloid below. To determine our projection in two dimensions, we'll equate these surfaces. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So how cute. We see that we have a circle here of radius 2. And so even if we were to go ahead and think about this on the Cartesian coordinate system, so here's our projection, that shadow cast. We see we have that beautiful full circle. And we think to ourselves, wait a second, it's much easier to integrate circles with respect to polar coordinates. So instead of defining the bounds on x and y, let's define the bounds on r and theta. We can see here that the radius r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2. And because we have a full circle here, we know that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So this is the domain of our surface, or our region r. So we'll use these bounds when we integrate. So now we're ready to get started on setting up our surface integral here. So we want to go ahead at this point and redefine the vector field. So the given vector field is, or has components y, negative x1, 
And since we know we're going to be integrating with respect to polar coordinates here, let's convert these to their equivalent polar coordinate form. So we're going to replace y with r sine of theta. We'll replace minus x with minus r cosine of theta. And 1 remains 1. So the next thing that we need to do in our process of setting up this vector surface integral is to find the components of our normal vector, which we know are minus the partial derivative of z with respect to x, minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y, 1. And to do this, we use our explicitly defined surface, which is our paraboloid z is equal to x squared plus y squared. So you can see that the partial derivative of z with respect to x is 2x. The partial derivative of z with respect to y is 2y. But again, keeping in mind that we're integrating with respect to polar coordinates, we use our polar conversion formulas to rewrite x as r cos theta and y as 2r sine of theta. And so plugging these into our normal vector here, we have minus 2r cosine of theta minus 2r sine of theta and then positive 1. So we want to pause for a cause here, or exercise a little caution. Right, this vector as it's written is pointing in the upward direction or the positive z direction. We want to keep in mind that we our surface is oriented in the downward direction. And so in order to fix our orientation here, we simply need to multiply our normal vector by a negative. So this is going to leave us with the components positive 2r cosine theta, positive 2r sine theta, negative 1. So this is the vector that we will be using in our surface integral. And we're now going to go ahead and we'll dot it with this re uh, redefined vector field. So we're going to compute the dot product of our vector field with this normal vector. And keep in mind, we're using the negative normal vector. So we have f dot n which is r sine of theta, negative r cosine of theta, 1. And we're dotting this with the normal vector that we just found. We need a little bit more room. 2r cosine of theta, 2r sine of theta, negative 1. And then taking the dot product here, we have 2r squared sine of theta times cosine of theta minus 2r squared sine of theta times cosine of theta. Hooray. And then 1 times negative 1 leaves us with minus 1. And we're excited because we see that these first two terms cancel out entirely. So we are left with a dot product here of simply negative 1. And so at this point, we're ready to set up and evaluate the surface integral. And this is the vector surface integral for flux. So we are computing the surface integral over S of the vector field dotted with our normal vector, ds. So plugging in those bounds that we found at the beginning, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi. The integral from 0 to 2, we found the dot product is simply negative 1. And then our differential is r dr d theta. So integrating with respect to the radius, this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of minus the radius squared over 2 from 0 to 2 d theta. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative 4 halves minus 0 d theta 
which simply leaves us with the integral from 0 to 2 pi of negative 2d theta. And this integrates to negative 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi for a beautiful final answer of negative 4 pi.